Hi, my name is Nick from IT Supplies, and in this video, we're going to cover the proper tools, equipment, ink technology, media selection, and methods on how to install printed floor graphics. All right, so before we get started in the how to install the floor graphics, there's some important things that you have to do prior to selecting your floor graphics. So one of the big things is since it's gonna be on the floor, often in retail and areas where people are gonna be walking over it, you wanna make sure that anything you're putting on the floor has a, either a, a single step UL410 slip rating or a laminate that you're gonna cover your graphics with that's gonna have that UL410 slip resistance rating. That's super important, not only for the safety of the people walking on it, uh, but also for just legality reasons. So you wanna make sure that you cover your bases there as well. So now we're gonna move over into the application where I'm gonna be using the Nina product, which I'll get into next. And so now that you know some of the materials, uh, the next important thing that you need to do before installing a graphic uh, is making sure you have a clean surface to work with. So uh, with smooth floors and you know tile, things that are non-porous, you can use a number of cleaning products, non-abrasive cleaning products, uh, and uh, either or even soapy water. Um, but you want to make sure that you wipe it down clean, make sure there's no dirt, grease, or grime. And uh, you can even, you know, depending the floor you're on, hit it with a little bit of isopropyl alcohol to really make sure you, you've cleaned it off. Um, and then on low pile carpet, it's even more important to make sure you have a clean surface. So uh, obviously it's a little tougher to see if you've actually cleaned it all or not, but using a carpet cleaner of some sort, and again, making sure you've removed all that grease and grime so that you get a good, good adhesion, um, you know, not only for your smooth, but also your, your uh, you know, textured or carpet surfaces that you're applying to. So moving into tools. So, there's a number of things that you could, you could arm yourself with, but obviously you want to bring some cleaning supplies and then a microfiber towel so you're not leaving any, um, you know, like paper towel might leave some debris behind. So a good microfiber towel would work best when you're cleaning the floor. Also, you might encounter maybe some gum on the floor or maybe some other mud, things that won't come off as easily with the towel. So having like a plastic scraper and then even a metal scraper, depending what surface you're using so you don't damage it, uh, to get up anything that you see on the floor that might prohibit a nice smooth, clean adhesion to the surface. Um, and then over here, I have some application tools. So this little gadget's great for uh, slitting the back of the vinyl. So when you're doing bigger graphics like this, uh, you can take out a section uh, of the backer to align it properly so you're not having to you know, pull up and reapply each time. And then having a squeegee, uh, they make these in all different sizes. I'm, I have a slightly smaller one. It's uh, plastic and felt on, on each side, so that will help with uh, what we're doing today. So today we're using the uh, Anina product, the Digiscapes uh, footstep product. So um, this product is a single step product, so you don't have to laminate. And whenever you're doing a single step product and you're printing on it, you want to make sure you're using some ink technology that's going to be durable like a latex ink or a uh, UV ink. You can get away with eco-solvent inks, but you're just going to make sure that you're curing proper uh, so you don't have any you know, issues with the ink coming off. But um, usually latex and solvent, or I'm sorry, latex and UV, you can get away with doing that. So first I'll start with the, the smaller graphics. So with this one, uh, the steps are pretty easy. So since it's so small, it's pretty easy just to take the, off the entire backer for this one because it's very manageable to move it around and figure out where I need to put it. So, um, so with this, we're going to want to start by just gently putting it on the floor and, and making sure it's aligned. And then you're going to want to start squeegeeing out to the outsides first to seal that edge and then coming backwards just a little bit at a time just to make sure that you're coming down and getting rid of any air bubbles that might come up as you're squeegeeing down. So as you can see here, this floor isn't completely smooth. So you can see that there's some texture that comes through, but and there's a little pebble there I missed. But um, again, once you put this down, you're just gonna wanna go from the middle out and just go one last time over the edges to make sure that you seal the edges 
of that so it won't come up. So moving on to the larger graphic here, our approach is gonna change a little bit with the installation. So with the smaller one, we were able to just peel the backer off and squeegee it on, a little bit more simple. For larger graphics, obviously we're dealing with much bigger surface areas, so there's a tool out there that is really helpful for this situation. So these vinyl backer cutting knives are really great for that. Uh, this area slides right beneath the backer and the vinyl, and there's a knife inserted here. Most of these come with a, a, like a PTFE coating that won't stick to the vinyl as you slide it back. So what you can do here is create a nice channel in the back here to just be able to remove from the center. So what's this gonna help you do is when you're aligning it, you can align it without having to have the edges stick like we had with the smaller graphics. So once I am able to set this up so it looks pretty straight, I'm now able to squeegee from the center down, right in the center of the graphic where there is no backer. So you can kind of see the contrast here because of the form using. This makes it a lot easier to install the rest of the graphic. So now I could fold over one edge and remove, start to gently remove the backer on the edge. And then I can start by squeegeeing gently across the edge. So they make bigger squeegees that would probably be a little bit more ideal for the situation, but since this one's not super big, it's manageable to use the smaller squeegee. So now that I've moved it all the way to the edge, I can seal the edges here. Make sure that I got any remaining air bubbles out. And then start with the other edge. So now that our floor graphic is on the floor here, we had our small and our large. So again, this is a single step product made by Nina. And uh, we also carry a few other single step items made by Jessup. Uh, and then uh, our two step items, uh, you can find all of these items on our website on, at www.itsupplies.com under the floor graphics tab. Also, there's certain materials that we carry that are better for certain floors. So um, we carry uh, a wide variety of, of different uh, adhesive vinyls that go directly on the floor uh, from Avery, uh, Nina, um, General Formulations, uh, and uh, some other house brand items that we have that we call Simply Elegant. But it's important that, again, when you're picking your, your vinyl material, so let's say you're doing a smooth floor, right? So there's a few single step materials vinyls that you could print directly to with either an eco solvent, latex, or UV printer where you don't have to laminate and it still gives you that UL410 slip resistance. So again, be sure to check the specs on that. Uh, a lot of other materials have uh, two-step situations. So uh, for instance, General Formulations Traffic Graphic has a couple different options. The 210, which is for more smooth surfaces like tile or cement. Uh, and then they also have a 212, which is built for low pile carpet that you often find in retail situations or even offices. Um, and then also for smooth surfaces that aren't so smooth. So that extra tack that you get with that 212 really helps bond to the floor even when you get a little bit of uneven surface on a relatively smooth looking surface. Um, and then today, what we're gonna go through uh, is also the over laminates as well. So on a two-step, there's different laminates that work better in different situations. So again, that 212 that you're talking about with the low pile carpet has more of a soft, squishy feel. So if you have someone walking around in heels, you're gonna wanna make sure you laminate it with something that's not gonna puncture easily. 
So GF has a couple options for that. The uh, 109 and the 211 really do a good job. They're five mil and a six mil. They're PVC based, so they're a little bit uh, more of a harder uh, material, not soft. So those would be great options for those. Um, and then again, be versatile with this, be creative. You can use some of these four graphics stuff like the 212 on say a table and laminate it with a uh, GF213, which has actually rating for indirect food content. So don't just stop at the floors, advertise on tables, maybe up at the register at a, a fast food place, you know, be creative. So think about advertising space, not only on the floor, the walls, but also on tables. Mm -hmm.